unfortunately, the picture froze, and, uh, well, let me introduce you to Shivani. You may speak now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Shivani, this is, uh, this is your first appearance on camera, is it? Uh, in the Mara, yes. In the Mara. And but live, and definitely. Live. Right, yes. good. Well, welcome. Thank it's you. wonderful to have you with us. Thank you. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Starting with your surname, which has gone out of my head. <laughs> um, my name's Shivani Bala, and I work up in northern Kenya um, on a lion conservation project called Iwasa Lions. Um, I'm here because I'm a National Geographic explorer, and I'm also a Big Cats Initiative grantee. And I've been with James now since yesterday, although it feels much longer because we've seen so much. And I'm it's glad been that's why it feels longer. <laughs> that's how long it feels for me. <laughs> it's been a great couple of days um, with animals everywhere. So, yeah. And uh, the biggest difference between the area you're from, which is Samburu, right? Yeah. Up in the north of, Ke north. North of Kenya, is, is what? What is the biggest difference? I think there's many differences, James. I think, well, one, um, the wildlife density here is pretty spectacular. There's animals everywhere. Yeah. I mean, we bump into lions every half an hour, every 20 minutes. We drove around up the ridge for the last two days, and we keep bumping into the same lions who don't really move here. And that is a big difference to Samburu, where you have to go for a long time to see lions, and you have to travel huge distances. Um, and then the vegetation. This is very open, and there's grass everywhere. It's a very productive landscape, mm. whereas, um, unfortunately, in Samburu, we don't get that much rain. So grass is, is, we just don't have grass, so the number of herbivores is a lot less, and it's a lot more difficult for lions and other carnivores to survive. So I just, you know, here it's, it's such an incredible landscape because there's food and there's water everywhere, mm. whereas uh, it's much harder in Samburu. There's not... It's not as accessible mm. because of the climate. And you say you've only got something like 50 millimeters of rain last year. Last year we had very little, so we haven't actually had proper rain for about a year and a half. Okay, so that's about and that's two inches of rain. Yeah, so it's it's very dry. Fortunately, our river is flowing, but it, okay. we go through periods of when that dries up completely, and it's just a challenge for the wildlife. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, some lions behind you. Yeah. You to, can you see them, Fergus? Are well, they doing nothing? Uh, I can't, I can't see, see them with my eyes. Oh, I see. They're lying there. They're lying there. These guys are amazing. Now we saw something quite interesting last night. We saw that a lioness basically take down what we thought was an adult wildebeest, or uh, as we saw them. She jumped on the back of the adult wildebeest, he kicked her off, and then there was a sort of standoff. And uh, I wanted to get your interpretation of what happened there. Why did she give up? Why did she leave that adult? Well, I think, I mean, I think one thing that's quite unique here is lions are killing but not really eating. And we've passed so many carcasses which are either half-eaten or completely left alone. Mm. And I think she, she looked pretty full. I mean, I think she'd killed that wildebeest but then decided to give up. Um, I'm not sure if she's went back. I think someone ate it because there was very little left this morning. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, I think lions here just have it easy. There's game everywhere. Yeah. And she's, you know, they're, they're killing but they're not eating or they're eating a little bit and that's something again I'm not used to seeing I'm used to seeing lions kill something and eat and absolutely it. everything they make the most of that kill yeah. but here there's food everywhere so it's it's just it's different it uh, I think yesterday she was probably full I'm, I'm interested to see what happens today mm. I mean the lions are sitting out there in the open there's wildebeest all everywhere. around them and so it'll be really interesting to see who gets up. If they do, are they going to go for a wildebeest? I mean, just coming around the swamp, yeah. we've seen two dead wildebeests two dead and bodies. not eaten. Yeah, uneaten. So uh, we have a question from John. Yeah. I'd like to know how you got into this line of work. So I got into this. I've, I was born in Nairobi, and I've been on wildlife safaris ever since I was a child with my parents. I used to come here a lot when I was a kid, so I loved mm. wildlife. And for me, when I was eight years old, my dad took me on safari to Samburu, and I saw my first cheetah, and I loved cheetahs ever since then. And so literally, it's been a childhood dream of mine to, to do something with the big cats. And it, my, my cheetah passion changed to lions when I moved to Samburu, 
15 years ago, and I learned that lions are in trouble. The numbers of lions across Kenya, across Africa, are very low, and no one had any idea how many lions were in in um, in Samburu or in northern Kenya. So I shifted my focus. I, I started learning about the lions up there and became fascinated because it is di very different to this. Mm. And I grew up coming to the Mar and seeing big prize lions, just like what we've seen in the last mm. two days. But Samburu doesn't have that. We have solitary lions. We have small groups of lions. We have males who are on their own. I mean, they have to live by themselves. And so that really got me interested. And I was, I was hooked as to why is it so different up here? Mm. And there was such a need for conservation, which is really why I got into got into doing what I do now. And it's not. I mean, you don't only do pure biological research, do you? I mean, that's not the focus of what you do. No, our focus is very much community-based conservation. So it's working with communities to um, increase tolerance and encourage them to live with lions. And the reality is, lions across Africa are in so much trouble that without engaging communities, there is no hope. And so our focus, 70-80% of what we do is working with communities to try and encourage them to become lion ambassadors. And we've been doing this now for 10 years, and that's where we work with young warriors, we work with women, we work with children, really trying to enhance coexistence. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see. They're out there. And because our parks are so small, again, much smaller than the Mara, it, it's important that lions are safe outside. Mm. And the only way they can be safe outside is by working with people. Um, so that's that's pretty much what we do, is very much community focused. Um, our research biological side of things, we, we do look at uh, dispersal of mm. young males, because that's very, you know, when a, when a male's about three, four years old, he leaves his pride and he starts venturing off by himself. Into community lands quite Exactly. Often. And yeah. those are the ones that get into trouble. Okay. So we are trying to look at how do these young males disperse from one area to another and what is needed to keep them alive. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, then we had another question from Caitlin. Caitlin, um, you've been there 15 years, you say? Yeah. Yeah. And what did you do before that? Um, I worked for an elephant organization. Okay. Yeah, so that's what took me up to Samburu, um, an elephant conservation organization called Save the Elephants. Okay. And I used to do their education program, so that was really my introduction into community work. Right. Yeah. Marvelous. Good. We're going to sit here, I think, for the next little while. I'm hoping we're going to catch these lions on the hunt to the other yeah. side of the river though, however, is quite difficult for us to uh, get any signal out of. We did try three or four times. So we'll sit here for a while, see what goes down, and we'll keep you posted. Let's head across to Tristan, who is still with his elephants.